டாக்ரியோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் டாக்ரியோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் இஸ் த இன்ஃப்ளமேஷன் ஆஃப் லாக்ரிமல் சாக் தேர் ஆர் டூ டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் டாக்ரியோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் அக்யூட் டாக்ரோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் அண்ட் கிரானிக் டாக்ரோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வி வில் சி கிரானிக் டாக்ரோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் சின்ஸ் இட் இஸ் மோர் காமன் தென் அக்யூட் கிரானிக் டாக்ரோசிஸ்டைட்டிஸ் ப்ரீடிஸ்போசிங் ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் ஆர் ஃபார்ட்டி டு சிக்ஸ்டி இயர் ஓல்ட் ஃபீமேல் இட் இஸ் ரேரர் இன் பிளாக்ஸ் தேன் ஒயிட்ஸ் அஃபெக்ட்ஸ் த ஃபேஷியல் கான்ஃபிகரேஷன் அண்ட் இட்ஸ் யூஸ்வலி சீன் இன் லோவர் சோஷியோ எக்கனாமிக் கிளாஸ் அண்ட் புவர் ஹைஜீன் A case example is like this. A 42-year-old female from low social economic status came with swelling near medial canthus of the eye. Inflammation of lacrimal sac occurred due to stasis of tear in lacrimal sac. There are two main factors responsible. One is obstruction and other is excess lacrimation. In obstruction, there can be anatomical factors like narrow lumen, which is genetic. and there can be foreign body obstruction and excess lacrimation can cause stasis of tears in lacrimal sac mild grade inflammation of sac and obstruction in the lower end of naso lacrimal duct can also cause stasis of tear in the lacrimal sac source of infection when the conjunctiva is in- infected it can cause lacrimal sac infection also nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses The causative organisms are Staphylococci, Streptococci, Pneumococci and Pseudomonas. We can see that caucus type of bacteria affect more. We come to the clinical features. Chronic Dacrocystitis. First we have chronic cateral stage, mucosyl stage, chronic separative or pyocyl stage and then there is fibrotic stage. We will see the first stage. In chronic cateral stage, we see there is a mild inflammation of the sac with blockage of naso lacrimal duct we can also see watering of the eyes and on syringing we will find clear fluid with few mucoid flakes on dacrocystography we can see there is a block in the naso lacrimal duct second stage is mucosyl stage it follows chronic stagnation of tears which will lead to distension of the sac Regurgitation is the test where we press against the lacrimal sac of the patient. On regurgitation test, we can see milky or gelatinous mucoid fluid. On dacrocystography, we can see distended sac along with blockage of nasolacrimal duct. In the first stage, we saw mild inflammation. Here, we will start to see distension of the sac. Also, it will lead to formation of encysted mucosyl. third stage is the chronic separative or pyocyl stage this is due to a pyogenic infection in this stage mucoid discharge will become purulent here the mucosyl is converted into pyocyl here we can also see epiphora swelling recurrent conjunctivitis and erythema on regurgitation test we can see purulent discharge on the second stage on regurgitation test we saw milky or gelatinous mucoid fluid we can also see encysted pyocyl in this stage fourth stage is the fibrotic sac stage low grade repeated infection for prolonged periods result in small fibrotic sac due to mucosal thickening and persistent epiphora and discharge on dacrocystography we can see that the sac has become very small complication of chronic dacrocystitis chronic intractable conjunctivitis ectropion of lower lid maceration and eczema of lower lid chances of corneal ulceration are increased in treatment there is conservative treatment by probing with bowman's probe we can also do balloon catheter dilation and then there is surgical treatments like dacrocystorhinostomy dcr dacrocystectomy dct conjunctivo dacro rhinostomy cdcr acute dacrocystitis is acute separative inflammation of lacrimal sac there is a painful swelling in the region of the sac etiology acute exacerbation of chronic dacrocystitis acute peridacrocystitis due to involvement of neighboring structures causative organisms are similar to chronic dacrocystitis streptococcus staphylococcus 
hemolyticus pneumococcus clinical features there are three stages in acute dacrocystitis the first stage is stage of cellulitis where there is a painful swelling which is hot red firm and tender to touch which means painful to touch we can also see epiphora fever and malaise second stage is the stage of lacrimal abscess continued inflammation leads to occlusion of canaliculi in this stage the sac is filled with pus and there is large flocculent swelling the third stage is the stage of fistula formation when lacrimal abscess is left unattended it discharges spontaneously leaving an external fistula complications acute conjunctivitis lid abscess conversion of corneal abrasion into corneal ulcer osteomyelitis of lacrimal bone orbital cellulitis and facial cellulitis treatment with antibiotics which can be systemic and topical drainage of the lacrimal abscess anti inflammatory and analgesic and hot fomentation